For those of you who don't know, I'm Maggie, and we are back today with a classic favorites video, talking about all of my favorite things that I've been loving in the month of January. And this is kind of all over the map. I feel like in general, most of my favorites are always geared around lifestyle. We have some beauty thrown in here. We have some new activities that I've picked up. We have some cleaning products. We're covering a lot of different bases here today, but the first thing that I wanna talk about is something that's really been occupying a ton of my brain space this month. I'm really excited that Brian's kind of jumped on the train with me because we are trying out this thing called 30 days to minimalism. I got this from a blog well, and YouTube channel called Pickup Limes. So she had this awesome checklist and this is what I needed. I clean out my clothes all the time, but I forget to clean out the other things that bother me like stuffed drawers that can't close or I don't know, utensils in the kitchen that annoy me that I always move out of the way and never reach for or maybe just like clogged kitchen cabinets and I always complain that we don't have enough kitchen storage, but maybe it's because I was just hoarding a bunch of things that we didn't need. And I like that in her video that introduces this checklist, she says, do this at your own pace. Like this is called 30 days to minimalism, but you don't have to finish in 30 days. It takes some people longer or some people less time, depending on how many things that they have. And there's not any one size fits all to minimalism. And I'm really glad that she said all of this because I watch a ton of documentaries and YouTube videos and read blogs about a lot of people who approach minimalism very differently. And I think that's what I like about the concept is that it's not one size fits all. So there's really no way for you to do it wrong. One thing that Pickup Limes talks about a lot is using the Marie Kondo method to figure out what works for you. And in the Marie Kondo method, she encourages you to pick up each item and to figure out if it sparks joy. When I was cleaning out my closet, I was going through and I was like, this shirt has never fit me. I hung on to it because it's super cute and I want to love it, but if it never fit me and I would always put it on, look in the mirror and be like, nope, put something else on, then it needs to go. It doesn't matter how much I like the shirt. It doesn't make me happy when I put it on because it doesn't fit me right and it doesn't look good, so I need to get rid of it. And so if you use that mentality, you may end up with a different number of things than your neighbor who's doing it, but the whole goal is for you to live in a house surrounded by things that you actually love and use and care about and not just junk that you're kind of like, yeah, I could do without that, or that's bothering me sitting there, whatever. I have done this completely out of order. It's just whenever I have time to do something, I'll pick up and do it. And I'm happy to say that I've gotten rid of a ton of stuff that has just been weighing me down for several years. And I plan to do an entire video to kind of recap my experience with this, tell you things that I've learned about cleaning out that have helped me, and putting together a bunch of resources for you to figure out what to do with all of the things that you clean out. Because I feel like that's the biggest hurdle for me. Once I clean it out, I really want it all gone. But oftentimes I don't know where to start or how to get rid of it in a good way that's not just going to pollute the earth. Working on that, found a ton of cool resources and I'm really excited to share that with you soon. But I just had to give a plug for this little program because I think it's a great thing to start in the new year to help you start fresh and just to feel renewed in your own home since we're all still here all the time. Whoa. <laughs> Almost fell off the chair. Okay. The next product that has been a highlight of the month is Skylar's scent for January, which is called Green Goddess. This is described as bright, energetic, and fresh, and is seriously such an energizing scent. It smells so good. It smells super like shower fresh, but also with a hint of floral. The top scent notes are green leaf shiso, ivy greens, and water lily. And I always tell you that how I identify if I'm gonna like a Skylar scent before it ever hits my doorstep, is to look at the scents that you layer it with. And right here it says that you should layer it with salt, air, and coral, which happen to be like my top two favorite scents from Skylar. Well, I really like Pre too. So it doesn't matter. That general like type of scent is my favorite. Salt Air, for those of you that don't have it or have never smelled it, is a super fresh, like you are in the middle of the summer, standing next to the ocean, just kind of like salty, seaweedy, just fresh, fresh, fresh kind of scent. And then Coral is one that's a little bit more bright and bubbly and punchy. And that one is the one that lasts on my skin so, so well. Coral is a lot more fruity than Salt Air. So if you were to mix these together, you kind of get the essence of Green Goddess. I know it's so hard to describe perfumes over the internet, but trust me, if you are a fresh, fruity, bright, bubbly kind of scent lover, 
this will be up your alley. Do not skip this this month. Definitely get Green Goddess. I love it, love it, love it. Think that the packaging is gorgeous. So if you're interested in trying the Skylar Scent Club, I do have a code this or that 20 that can get you 20% off of your purchase and anything else on the Skylar website in case maybe salt, air, or coral sounded interesting to you. Sticking in the beauty space is this little glowy combination that I've discovered and have started loving. So in the summertime, my skin tends to be a little bit oily. And so using a bunch of glowy products is not really an option for me because honestly, I'll just look like an oil slick. So in the winter, that is when I dive into a lot of the glowy products that I have because I don't want my skin to look dull. I don't know, I just like to have a little life, a little glow, a little color. But my favorite products that I have been loving they're all getting a shout out individually. And the first item that honestly is the biggest surprise because I feel like I, I would have just skipped over this had I gotten it in a store, but it did come in my most recent FabFitFun box and I am blown away by it. I think I did customize this item because I had heard good things about it from a friend, but man oh man. This is the Tula Skincare Probiotic and Superfoods Rose Glow and Get It Cooling and Brightening Eye Balm. So it has this little cap and it twists up just like a lipstick but this is actually a balm that you put under your eyes. In the morning, I'll put on my moisturizer, then I put on my SPF, then I put on a primer that I'll talk about in a second, and then I use this just under the eyes and you have to let it dry. That's what I found. It does have a cooling effect, but letting it sit and just kind of soak into your skin makes it to where when you go to put your concealer on top of it, you're not like moving it all around. Like it's gonna stay under your eye and have it be really brightened and you just look more awake and youthful. This just has such a no noticeable effect on my skin and I really can't say enough good things. This is something that I will definitely repurchase. I'm sure this is going to last forever. I feel like I've used it every single day since I've gotten it and there's still a ton of product to be used. A little goes a long way. You don't have to like rub it back and forth a million different times. This has seriously been the biggest surprise this month. Oh really I got it in December so it's just continued to be a love I guess. I teased this one earlier when I was talking about the order of my skincare routine, and this is the glowy primer that I've been loving. This is not new to me. I have had like two or three bottles of this in the past. Love them, think that it works great still to this day, and this is the Becca Backlight Priming Filter. I don't use primers ordinarily, especially not in the summer. I don't like pore filling primers or anything that I feel like is just clogging up my pores. I don't feel like I need it for my makeup to stay on very long because I don't use a lot of like full coverage products and so I don't need my makeup stuck to my face all day. So I don't typically use primers, but in the winter time, again, when my skin is much drier and just duller and I want it to look a little bit more lively, then I will use some sort of glowy primer and this is so good. Now Physicians Formula does have a dupe for this, but I will say that this smells way better than the Physicians Formula one does. And I think that this one is a little bit like creamier. Like I feel like I can use less of this product and it covers my face than I can with the Physicians Formula one. The other one is still good. It comes in a really pretty frosted glass bottle, just like the full size of this one typically does. But I ended up getting this little travel size version and this little add-ons kit from FabFitFun. And I'm glad that I did because it had been forever since I had used this. And I feel like this with that Tula stick and one other product that I'm gonna mention next, it has just really made my skin look healthy throughout the winter. And I'm not constantly looking at my skin like, ugh, it needs a little bit of moisture. It needs a little oomph. So big shout out to this. This next product was a little bit of an accident. So I used to love the Laura Mercier Loose Setting Powder. Still do. It's a great powder. But right when I ran out of that powder, I was like, I had this friend at work who had this beautiful complexion. And she said that she used the Bare Minerals kind of powder foundation. But I had used that in the past and it just didn't work for me. But I always thought that she had some sort of like glow to her skin. And so I ended up buying this Laura Mercier Compact. It's the Candle Glow Sheer Perfecting Powder. At first when I got this, I was like, mm, I don't really like see that this is doing much for me. You can see that it is kind of glowy here and it has that candle like glow quality to it. So you're not gonna be like Edward Cullen shimmering in the sunlight or anything like that. But the first time I used this, I used it with a regular kind of powder brush for loose powder and it didn't work. It wouldn't pick up any of the product and I was like, oh no, did I get a total dud on this? And then I ended up purchasing this brush from Eco Tools that is meant to pick up like pressed powders and it 
is amazing and it has made such a difference and has made me really fall in love with this product. While I'm piling on all of these glowy products, I do need them to stay in place. And so I do want to cover them in some sort of powder, but again, I don't want to take away from the glowiness. So this is just bridging that gap and being like the glowy setting topper to what I need to all of these other glowy products. This is expensive as far as like pressed powders go, but I do think that it's totally worth it. And it's not as glittery to me as the hourglass powders are. It's a little bit more subtle, which is why I really like this. All right, next up are some cleaning products that I heard about originally from The Define Dish, which is a food blogger that I love to follow. Y'all heard me talk about her 800 million different times with her cookbook, but she also has this sponsorship with Branch Basics. And what this is, is like a more natural cleaning product brand. So one of their most popular products here is their all-purpose cleaner. And it comes in this teeny tiny little bottle concentrate in the $5 trial kit that I got. And then it also came with this bottle. So you pour the entire concentrate in and then you fill this up and this is what you can use to do everything. It is marketed to clean surfaces. It can treat stains on your laundry. It can get grease out of things or off of your countertops or stove tops or even inside your oven. And it's also fine for you to use on your dishes. So again, when they say all purpose, they're not joking. The thing that I use this the most for is to get really heavy, greasy messes off of our stove top and it has worked wonders. Even the caked on stuff on the eye of your stove that's really hard to get off traditionally, this really does some work on. So I have been super impressed with the all-purpose cleaner and the nozzle on this spray bottle, so good. It has like the stream that you can use, but I prefer a really good evenly dispersed spray and this nozzle is killer. And their whole thing is that they send you a bottle one time and then they send you like a bottle of concentrate. So when you want more, you're not just getting like a new spray bottle every single time to help kind of reduce the plastic waste that goes along with having a ton of different cleaning products. The other thing that I tried is the Oxygen Boost from the same brand, again, marketed as all natural. It has no bleach or ammonia, no dyes, no fragrances, and it's pretty much a blend of baking soda and powdered like hydrogen peroxide. So it's supposed to whiten and brighten, it removes stains and odors, and I have used this to clean my shower. So we have like this white and black tile in our shower that shows anything, anything. It was really a horrible choice, but we didn't design our house, so you live and learn, I guess. But we just had a lot of like that pink nastiness that just kind of grows in the shower over time. It's just kind of like mildewy stuff. How you're supposed to use this is that you use the all-purpose cleaner and you spray the surface. And then this comes with a little scooper and you scoop some of it, you sprinkle it over the all-purpose cleaner where you sprayed and then you let it sit for a little bit. And then I went in with a brush, kind of like a grout brush and just cleaned around it. And it did a really, really good job picking up a lot of the surface stains on that tile. In all of the discolored areas of our shower, this did an awesome job at being abrasive yet gentle and really restoring the white to the bottom of our shower. It says that you can use this as a laundry booster. So I would say anywhere where you would use bleach, you could probably use this. Pre-treating and general stain remover, pre-soaking and hand washing things, bathroom tile and grout, which is what I used it for. You could use it on carpet. This entire tub, and let me tell you, it's two pounds worth, only cost $10. Just switching over to some cleaner <laughs> cleaning product has been something that I've wanted to do from the get-go. These just aren't as accessible, like you can't find these in stores everywhere, which is kind of a bummer, so you do have to order it but clearly this is gonna last for a really long time because this is a huge tub and I'm not cleaning my shower that often. Maybe I should clean it more often. Anyway, just had to give a shout out to these. If you've been on the hunt for some more natural cleaning products that you wanted to integrate into your routine. All right, so the next couple of items are all focused more on like self care. And the first thing I wanna to talk to you about is not something I can physically show you because it's actually a service. So this month I took on Peloton's January workout challenge where you're supposed to work out every single day in the month. I thought this was gonna be such a a tall order and it made me super nervous and it was just one more thing that was like setting me up for failure. What this challenge has done for me, instead of intimidating me and making me feel bad about myself if I didn't get on the bike, because Peloton offers so many different types of workouts, it's exposed me to new ways to move my body, new instructors, and it's been keeping things really fresh. And so one day I was feeling so sore that I said I really want to do some yoga. Now it's crazy because I have always said that I don't like yoga. 
First of all, I'm not very flexible, and so I'm bad at yoga, and that's probably why I don't love it. But also, if that was gonna be my only workout for that day, I really prefer workouts that are gonna push me and be super duper strenuous because exercise is my stress relief. So I had always like put yoga on the back burner. I have now taken like five or six different yoga classes this month, and I love it. One of my goals for this year, like my personal goals, is to get more flexible, and so it's helping me achieve that goal but it's also stress relieving in a much different way. It's not pushing me to my limits. It's not making me exhausted, but it is making me more mindful. It allows me to slow down, to think through slow movements and just take a break from the screen, relax for a little bit. And that is something that I didn't realize I was missing. And when you have this challenge to work out every single day, figuring out new ways to stretch and care for your body and recover is very important. Yeah, I encourage you to try it if that's something you've been putting off too because I surprised myself this month. But sticking with the self-care kind of realm, I have also surprised myself with loving baths. Ever since we moved into this house, we do have a great soaker tub in our master bathroom. Because we had that, I was like, maybe I need to try baths again because I had always labeled myself as not a bath person. But I don't want this tub to go to waste and I'm really glad that I made a concerted effort to use it because I have also enjoyed relaxing in the bath, just putting on a show, not doing anything else because I'm so bad about watching TV and having to do something else because I'm feeling unproductive and it makes me stop because I can't bring a ton of activities into the bathtub and so I just zone out, watch a show that's relaxing and not stressful and just enjoy it and that has been really, really good for me. My friend Kessler gave me this awesome bath caddy that has made it super accessible. I used to like drag over this shelf and prop up my iPad or my phone up against our towel rack to make it stand up. It was just this whole thing. And now I have this great shower caddy that has all of these different organizational compartments so I could bring bath salts and a candle and my phone or iPad or maybe my Kindle if I wanted to read a book or something. That has made it ultra convenient and so easy to just hop in the bath and so it's actually relaxing. By the way, you can get it at Target. It comes in three different colors, gold, silver, and I think maybe black. If that's still available, I will definitely link it in the description box below for you because it is awesome and is like the exact same style as the super expensive one that like went viral around the internet around Christmas time. So it's like 25 bucks. She also gave me these little bath bombs and bath salts to go with the bath caddy. These are the Dr. Teal's Ultra Moisture bath bombs in the scent lavender which I love and is super relaxing this and eucalyptus mint are like my favorite from the dr. Teal's brand and these are really nice because they kind of make this like bubbling sound the whole time that you're in the bath it's almost as relaxing as like one of those wood wick candles you know that kind of crackles with the fire it kind of reminded me of that this is super moisturizing and I love that dr. Teal's doesn't use a bunch of crap in their products so it's paraben phthalate and dye free it smells like such pure lavender and these things last forever if you're a long bath taker highly recommend these I could probably cut one of these in half and that would be about the amount of time that I can last in a bath if bath bombs aren't your thing I would definitely recommend these bath salts I think I'm determining that I'm a bath salt person instead of a bath bomb because I can control how much that I put in just based on the length of my bath but this is the dr. Teal's Epsom salt melatonin sleep soak with essential oil blend it's kind of a lavender can chamomile mix and it makes your bathroom smell so good for days after you use this. But this is said to help ease aches and soreness from muscle pains. And the other day, again, because I took on this Peloton challenge, I was super sore from the strength workout that I did and my back and my shoulders were aching and my neck and stuff. So I hopped in the bath with, I think it recommends like two cups. So that's what I did. And I did just feel the tension release for me. But I also think it was because I was slowing down in super warm water. The winning quality about this is the scent and how wonderful and relaxing that it is. And that is everything. As usual, I'll have everything that I mentioned in this video linked in the description box below for you. And if you had any other additional favorites, or if you heard me talk about something and you think that I would like something similar, please let me know. But if you like this video, then like it. Stick around, subscribe, join the community, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.